Preparations for the next phase of Starship Journey are already underway. The first Starship V3 initial segment has emerged, showcasing the latest components for the orbital refueling system along with other key upgrades. This marks a significant advancement, one that will impact Starship's evolution beyond Flood 11. How remarkable and significant is this update? What does it mean for Starship's future and SpaceX's aspirations? Let's discuss it all in today's episode of NR Studio. Flight 11 once again demonstrated that Starship can achieve incredible feats. The mission not only met its objectives, but also highlighted key improvements across multiple systems. This triumph has laid a solid foundation for future development. The highly anticipated launch of a revised version of Starship, dubbed V3, is just around the corner. SpaceX has been teasing this next-generation model, which has the potential to radically improve Starship through a series of design modifications and performance enhancements. The V3 initiative marks a significant development in SpaceX's ambitions for full reusability, expanded missions, and orbital refueling capabilities. A few months ago, we witnessed the first indication of this new phase when the first V3 booster, B-18, was launched for assembly. On the other hand, the development of the vehicle itself, or the V3 vehicle, took longer to become apparent. Although various components of this version had been appearing at the production site for the past few months, construction was progressing gradually. However, on the morning of October 13th, the long wait finally paid off. The initial segment of S-39, which includes the nose section and cargo area, was seen being transported from Star Factory to Mega Bay 2. This relocation had actually been anticipated. Earlier this week, new equipment, including a lifting jig and a payload dispenser, arrived at Mega Bay 2. And the scaffolding surrounding S-39 at Star Factory was dismantled. These two events strongly indicated that the transfer was imminent. With the parts now in place, it's clear that the first component of the V3 vehicle is truly exceptional. It has exceeded expectations in terms of construction quality and intricate details that showcase the new systems it will incorporate. The most significant new feature is found in the payload area itself. Beneath the main payload entrance are a pair of circular openings equipped with protruding pipe-like extensions. If this seems familiar, it's because we first encountered a similar feature earlier this May. These elements are considered part of Starship's upcoming in-orbit refueling system. Now, these components have been officially integrated into the first SV-3 prototype. This is entirely logical, as SpaceX has affirmed that refueling in orbit will be an essential aspect of missions scheduled for next year. By incorporating these features at this stage, the company can initiate evaluations on how the system performs in the challenging conditions of space travel, particularly concerning its effectiveness under extreme heat, vibrations, and the pressures of both launch and return to Earth. These evaluations will establish whether the current placement is effective or if upcoming iterations will require modifications. Notably, the positioning of these refueling ports, situated above the payload section, brings forth several thought-provoking considerations. Located significantly above the fuel tanks, it might imply that the pipes will have to run a substantial length to connect with the fuel systems. A position that is lower and closer to the common dome of the tanks could seem more reasonable. However, this arrangement might also allow for greater flexibility regarding design and thermal safety. Importantly, there seems to be an extra vent or support outlet just beneath the payload door, which could aid in fuel transfer or pressure management during missions. We might need to await formal approval from SpaceX to grasp the complete functionality, but this certainly creates an element of curiosity about the new layout. From this design, we can start to conceptualize how SpaceX's refueling mechanism might operate. Two pipelines might extend from the fuel tanks, connecting directly to these external locations. Each connection would function as a docking point, permitting Starship to link with another vessel, referred to as the chaser ship, to conduct cryogenic fuel transfers while in orbit. The open ends of the pipes on S-39 might ultimately feature further protective shields or mechanical doors that operate automatically to protect the system during flight. The addition of this system at such an early phase clearly demonstrates SpaceX's commitment to realizing orbital refueling. The company understands that this technology will be pivotal for launching Starship beyond Earth's orbit to destinations like the Moon, Mars, and further. Looking ahead, the sequence of tests will be gradual yet ambitious. Flight 12, anticipated to showcase the first V3 prototype, will likely aim at confirming the new design elements, ensuring structural reliability, and achieving orbit. 
Once that target is met, following missions, possibly flights 13 and 14, will try to fully recover both stages in orbit. Afterwards, SpaceX may begin missions for payload deployment and eventually the highly anticipated refueling demonstrations. As per the existing plans, the refueling trials will commence with two starships, where one will serve as the target while the other works as the chaser. These two will aim to dock in orbit, showcasing the precise alignment and fuel transfer techniques essential for prolonged missions. If it proves successful, SpaceX will advance to establishing a stable orbital storage facility and tanker adaptations of Starship. This certainly ranks among the most intricate engineering tasks SpaceX has ever pursued. The successful transfer of cryogenic fuels in outer space necessitates remarkable accuracy, robust mechanisms to prevent leakage and boil-off, and the capability to synchronize substantial hardware with precision at a millimeter level in microgravity environments. Nonetheless, those at the helm of SpaceX maintain optimism. Both Musk and Shotwell have likened the refueling operation to the docking maneuvers of Dragon with the International Space Station. Over the last 10 years, SpaceX has refined this operation, achieving a flawless success rate in over 50 docking events. This impressive achievement lays a solid groundwork for applying similar strategies to the significantly larger and more complex Starship operations. As the initial elements of Ship V3 begin to take form within Megabay 2, one certainty emerges. The future of Starship is now imminent. It is materializing right in front of us. Every newly constructed segment draws SpaceX closer to fulfilling its ambitious goal of interplanetary exploration. This signifies the initial significant upgrade noted on S-39, however, the advancements don't conclude there. Next in line is the Composite Overwrapped Pressure Vessel, or COPV. Although concealed in the payload section, its bright orange color ensures it remains noticeable. First observed inside the Star Factory, these revamped COPVs demonstrate major improvements in both durability and thermal resistance. This modification directly addresses concerns identified in V2. During the S-36 test, Musk pointed out that a nitrogen COPV located in the payload bay did not meet its proof pressure. Since then, SpaceX has revamped the system to enhance dependability for the Starship V3 and as well as future enhancements to Super Heavy. Another noticeable alteration is the catching mechanism, which is now reduced in size and more streamlined, likely representing an early model for Chopsticks Pad 2. Although S39 will not experience catching this time, the design suggests advancement toward an improved catching setup. The heat shield also exhibits more obvious enhancements. The tiles appear to be more resilient with a new layer, potentially ablative, situated beneath the catching point, offering improved thermal defenses. The shield now extends deeper under the front flaps to protect the nose cone during re-entry. And these are merely the upgrades observed in the upper section. Additional innovations are anticipated in the lower section, including reworked fuel tanks, flaps, and Raptor 3 engines. The payload dispenser, which has already been relocated to Megabay 2, is expected to be integrated into the payload bay shortly. With the current momentum, SpaceX could finalize the entire S-39 stack by the middle or later part of next month, unveiling the most advanced version of Starship to date. Which upgrade are you looking forward to the most? Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments section below. And now we move to our closing narrative for today, shifting from SpaceX to Blue Origin, which recently achieved a significant milestone. The U.S. Space Force has awarded Blue Origin a substantial contract aimed at enhancing America's growing space infrastructure. In response to the nation's increasing number of satellite and spacecraft launches, Space Systems Command has asked Blue Origin to create and develop a new payload processing facility at Cape Canaveral, Florida. Scheduled to be operational in early 2028, this facility will be critical in supporting upcoming national security operations and strengthening America's presence in space. This collaboration is being established through the National Security Launch Space Vehicle Processing Commercial Solutions contract, valued at $78.5 million. This is referred to as the NSSL SVCSO. The new payload processing facility will be strategically positioned at Cape Canaveral, directly across from Blue Origin's current location at Rocket Park and adjacent to the Kennedy Space Center visitor area. This prime location places the new facility in the heart of the world's most active aerospace region, facilitating efficient collaboration between the government and commercial launch providers. 
Colonel Dan Highlander of the U.S. Space Force, who oversees operational integration for the Assured Access to Space Directorate at SSC, said, This second CSO contract demonstrates our continued dedication to meeting national security and commercial launch needs. This announcement follows a previous $77.5 million grant to Astro in April to enhance its payload processing capabilities at Vandenberg Space Force Base in California. Together, these initiatives will enhance the nation's capacity to prepare and process spacecraft along both coasts. The upcoming Blue Origin facility will be a state-of-the-art complex supporting multiple pre-launch preparations, including satellite fueling, battery charging, gas and propellant loading, and final encapsulation before launch. To safely perform these tasks, Blue Origin plans to build a clean, secure, and high-rise structure designed to accommodate sensitive flight hardware, hazardous materials, and explosives. As stated by SSCC's Assured Access to Space Division, the new payload processing facility will boast the capacity to support up to 16 missions per year, including the anticipated 7 or 8 NSSL missions dedicated to national security. One of the most exciting features of this project is that while Blue Origin will serve as the primary developer and operator of the facility, it will be accessible to additional aerospace companies participating in NSSL launches, such as SpaceX, ULA, Rocket Lab, and Stoke Space. Blue Origin, ULA, and SpaceX were selected for Phase 3, the second track of the NSSL contract, while Rocket Lab and Stoke Space were selected for Phase 3, the first track. This partnership fosters a cohesive ecosystem for both government and private sector launches, increasing efficiency and access across the industry. That's it for today's episode. See you in the next time.